Hey, this is Eric, and in this video, we're exploring how to use AI chatbots to help create educational maps. So Google My Maps is a free tool that allows you to create your own custom maps where you can add pins and then you can edit those pins to add content uh, to show what each pin represents. Now, you can do all this by hand, but that can take quite a while. Well, it turns out that Google My Maps does allow you to import a CSV file, a comma separated values file that holds all of the data needed to create the map. Well, the good news is we can use an AI chatbot like ChatGPT, for example, to generate that CSV file complete with all the data that we need for our informational map. We're going to take a look at how to do that in this video. So for my example, I decided to do a map on the battles of the American Revolutionary War, uh, but you really could do this on any topic, whether it's historical landmarks or inventions and discoveries, famous authors, uh, geometry in the real world, pretty much anything that you would like to put on a map. And then as far as the chat bot we're gonna use, um, I tried out three of them for this example. I used ChatGPT and I used Gemini and I used Claude. Um, they all worked really well for this, but again, there's lots of other ones out there. So I would encourage you to try your favorite chat bot for this project. So next up, we need a prompt. Uh, this is the particular prompt I used when I did this. Basically, I said, hey, generate a CSV file that can be imported into Google My Maps. Be sure to include double quotes around any data that may contain commas. Probably don't have to include that, but just to be safe, that is important since it's a comma separated values file. Just wanted to let it know to put those double quotes around anything that had commas in it. Um, then I told it the topic of the map is battles of the American Revolutionary War. Uh, I said each location should be an important battle from the war and to include at least 20 battles. And then I said include the following headers in the CSV file with the corresponding data for each location. Um, latitude and longitude, you probably want to include this no matter what you do because you do need to tell it where to put the pin. The rest of the stuff is gonna be more specific to yours, uh, but it said latitude and longitude, then the name of the battle, when the battle began, when it ended, who the American leader was, who the British leader was, the cause for the battle, you know, a recap of anything specific that happened during the battle, and then find the result, who won and how many casualties there were on each side. So that's the prompt that um, I'm gonna use uh, for my example. If we wanna generalize that, it'd be something more like this. So basically you could say, hey, generate a CSV file that can be imported into Google My Maps, include double quotes, blah, blah, blah. The topic of the map should be, boom, tell it what your topic is, explain what each location should be, um, tell it how many locations you want, and then just start listing them out. You know, here's the, here are the, the things I want for each location, you know, the items and the details similar to what I did here with this example. So um, you can easily uh, use that prompt and modify it. And of course, all of this is included in the blog post that goes along with this video, which is linked down below. So you could just easily copy and paste that. You do not need to retype any of that. All right, so let's go ahead and drop this into ChatGPT and we'll drop it into Gemini and we'll drop it into Claude. And here are the results. Now, depending upon the uh, chat bot you're using, you might have the option to just directly download the CSV file. It looks like ChatGPT is giving us a link to do that. And I believe Claude also has a download option over here. Gemini did not do that. It just gave us the actual data for the CSV file and a option to copy it. So we can talk about some different ways to process that. But if you do just get a link like with ChatGPT, just simply give a click on that and then you can say, yep, I want to save that CSV file and there you go. You've, you've got that saved. Pretty straightforward there. Uh, with Claude, if I come here and I click on the download option, um, it does look like it is saving it as a text file. Um, we do want it to be a CSV file, so if, if that does happen, no big deal. A CSV basically is a text file. It's just a text file that has 
commas separating the different uh, values. What you would just want to do is change where it says save as type. Just say all files. That way you can change the end of it. You can just go in and just delete the TXT and just put CSV on the end. That way it is saved in CSV format. Um, so that's good. Now when it comes to something like Gemini, um, since it didn't give us the direct download, uh, we got a couple options here. One is we could copy all of the content there. And then we could, for example, just create a Google document and we could paste that in. So let's go ahead and paste all that in there. And then we could go ahead and save that as a uh, as a text file and rename that. So that's that that's an option. I could uh, come up here. We'll just uh, rename this uh, Gemini demo just so that I know what that one was. Uh, and then I could say file download and I could just say as plain text. Um, and at that point, I could kind of do the same process. I say, well, let's make it plain text, but again, switch it to all files and then change the TXT extension to a CSV. So that, that will typically work. That, that'll get you what you need. Um, there is another approach though. Um, I really like just being able to boom, download it straight away and not have to you know jump through all those other hoops. But there is another option and that is you could, well, we could have asked it instead of generating a CSV file, uh, we could have asked it to generate a table instead. Um, Gemini seems to like making tables. Uh, and so if we'd said make a table instead, um, that could later be saved as a CSV file. Uh, Gemini makes it really easy to then take that table and export it right to Google Sheets, which is a easy way then to save as a CSV file. I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so here you can see I asked Gemini to generate a table instead of a CSV. And I also changed the wording here saying include the following headers in the table. Um, and it did, it created a table. So it's got all of that data. There's all the different battles of the war. Um, if I go to the very bottom and scroll over, you can see all of the different uh, columns that it generated in that table. And at the very bottom, if you scroll on over, you'll see export to sheets. So this is really nice, makes it real super easy. You can just click export to sheets and it will create a Google spreadsheet for you with all that data in there. Once that's created, you can click on it and and boom, there you go. So, you know, there you've got your file. From here, it's like really easy. Just save that as a CSV because that's pretty much how uh, spreadsheets are designed to be able to do. Just click on the file menu, go to download and say download as a CSV. And, and you got it. Simple as that. Boom. I can just go ahead and of course I probably rename it, but we'll just save it just uh, for uh, real quick there so we can have that done. There you go. And that's it. And so all of those different options can be used. Uh, the end result is we have a CSV file that has all of this data ready to go into Google My Maps. All right, so let's go ahead and create the map. So uh, what you want to do is head on over to Google My Maps. And from there, you can click on the create a new map up in the top uh, left hand corner there. And once that sets up your new map, excellent. Uh, you can, of course, give it a name if you want. For example, in this case, I'll just call this Revolutionary Battles. There we go. Excellent. Um, and then if you notice right below there, there is that import link that we saw at the very beginning of the video. Basically, you can just give a click on that and you can just go ahead and browse to go find the CSV file that you want to import. Now, I've got a bunch of examples here because I've been doing a whole, whole bunch of these. I'll just grab the one from ChatGPT. That's fine. We'll grab that one. And when you go to import that, it's going to ask you a couple of quick questions. One is it wants to know where to put the place mark. So it's saying, you know, which columns in the CSV file will designate the proper location. Well, it's going to be latitude and longitude. No, no need to change that. We'll just go ahead and continue. And then it's going to say, well, okay, what do you want to use as the title for your markers? Um, it would probably make sense in my case to use the battle as the title. So it'll show for each pin what the name of the battle is. But again, you would pick what makes the most sense out of your data. Go ahead and hit finish. 
and that's it. Look at that. <laughs> it just created the whole thing. And so there we go. If I go and click on any one of these, you can see here's the Battle of Camden. Here we've got Battle of Brandywine. Here we've got uh, on and on and on down the line, all these different battles, Battle of Yorktown, etc., etc., etc. And for each one, we've got uh, the start date, the end date, the American and British leaders, the cause, the recap, the result. Um, and as quick as that, we have this map ready to go. So at this point, you could be done, or if you want, you could continue to edit the map yourself. You know, maybe you're just using the AI chatbot to save you some time and get you started by building the majority of the map. What you can do if you want to is you can click on any of these pins and you can continue to edit it. So for example, I could click on the style button here and that would allow me to change, for example, the color of the pins. I could say, well, let's make all the pins red, you know, or I could say I want to change what the icon is so since these are battles maybe i want to pick an icon that's more like here we got some swords crossing there maybe i'll choose that and then now they're all swords crossing like that so i could go in and i could change the style of the pins or i could add a image this was battle of camden so let's copy that i could say let's add an image and if I come in here, let's see, I could go to Google Images and I could just run a search. I could say, let's search for the Battle of Camden. And, you know, hopefully there's a, you know, an image here that, you know, goes along nicely with that. Click insert and then give that a moment to insert and then go ahead and hit save. And there we go. And so now that has, you know, added that image there. I could also go in and I could edit. And if I wanted to edit it, I could, you know, change any of the data if I needed to adjust any of that. Um, pretty straightforward. Now, I did that on this one over here. Uh, so the one I showed at the beginning, that's exactly what I did. I actually went in and I switched it to individual styles rather than having all the items with the same style. You can come in and you can say, I don't want to use a uniform style. I want individual styles. That way every single pin can look a little different. And I decided to do that to color code the battles. So like, you know, if the British won, you know, it was red for red coats. If uh, the American one, I made it a blue pin. If it was a, a inconclusive battle, I made it gray. Uh, and so I went through and adjusted each one. But again, it saved me so much time by having to AI generate the initial uh, base layer of the map. And so then the final thing is just to share what you have created here. Um, and so when you're all done, um, you can go up to the top left-hand corner um, under the title. There's a share button. You can give a click on that. And it's pretty straightforward. Just give a little click here where it says anybody with this link can view. And once you've done that, you can now copy this link that you have created. And now if you were to give that link to somebody, they would be able to view this map. I'll go ahead and paste that into a different account here so you can see what that would look like from somebody who comes to view your map. And there you go. So now they would see all of the battles down the side here. Uh, and of course, they could click on any of them over here on the side or they could click on the pen itself to uh, you know pull it up on the side here. So whatever's more convenient for them, whether it's clicking on the pen or if it's going back to the list and clicking on them from there, but that would allow them to be able to see all of the uh, items you've added to the map. And that's it. I think that's a creative way to use AI to help us create informational or educational maps. Uh, I would love to see what you create. So if you do use this method, please uh, share the map and send the link on over to me. And I'd love to take a look to see at what you created. And as always, be sure to check out all of my AI resources that I have on my Control Alt Achieve website. You can just go to controlaltachieve.com and then just put a slash AI after the address and that'll jump you straight to my AI resources page. And for all my other resources, check out my blog at controlaltachieve.com. And to connect with me, go to bit.ly slash CAA connect where you'll find all of my social media links, email, newsletter, and more.